The motor tanker front sunder is leaving Hawaii and heading for the Arabian Gulf to load cargo. Six days later, the ship was involved in a catastrophe. That catastrophe should never have happened. We're going to examine the events leading up to the accident on the front sunder. The purpose is to show how the whole organization, from crew to the people ashore, can help to create a safe working environment on board the frontline fleet. In Oslo, Norway, Frontline's top management is gathered to listen to aircraft pilot Jarla Gimmestad. He is presenting a case that changed the airline's industry's view on safety. A disaster that happened on the Spanish island of Tenerife in 1977 caused the death of 580 people. In thick fog, two Boeing 747 jumbo jets collided on the runway. There were many factors leading up to this disaster, but the investigation revealed some astonishing facts. Jacob van Santen, captain of the KLM aircraft involved in the accident, was considered the perfect captain. He was an icon within the company. In a very stressful situation on the day, he was pressed for time. His plane was delayed due to being diverted from Las Palmas Airport, and he had almost reached his flight time limit. He needed to get airborne to avoid being grounded. At the time of takeoff, he misinterpreted the situation, thinking that the other 747 had already left the runway. His cockpit crew knew that he was cutting corners, and the flight engineer was convinced that they were heading straight for a fully loaded aircraft on the runway. The engineer tried to point this out, but was met with a brusque reaction from Captain Van Zenden. As a result, the engineer did not have the courage to abort the takeoff or challenge his captain's decisions. Captain Van Senten's position in the hierarchy prevented vital communication between himself and the crew. He effectively removed the safety net that could have averted the accident. Prior to the Tenerife tragedy, the airline industry had believed that if they had selected the right personnel and trained them well, no accidents would happen. After the Tenerife disaster, and two other similar accidents, they had to accept the fact that their way of thinking was a threat to safety. Since then, the airline industry has worked determinedly to create teams where everyone takes responsibility. The perfect airline captain of today is the one that creates an operational atmosphere where every crew member feels free to speak up. When encountering unsafe conditions, they do not hesitate to report to the captain. Recent research has shown that every airline pilot makes an average of four mistakes an hour. The team's common goal is to act as each other's eyes and ears, pick up on mistakes, and prevent incidents from developing into accidents.
vi har parkerat myten om ufallbarhet och det tror jag är er det tryggaste vi har gjort. The shipping industry faces similar challenges to the airline industry in creating an excellent safety crew. The tradition of a strong master is over 700 years old and deeply ingrained in the industry and in the maritime culture. Back in 2001, Frontline started to implement the safety theories of the airline industry on board all their ships. Well, there are some major differences between the aviation industry and the maritime industry. Aviation industry is young, maritime industry is old. Uh, the aviation industry in the Sharpen is composed of a relatively small number of people. On board a vessel there's a huge number of people with huge differences in culture, rank, age, education, salary, prestige. So there are differences that will make it more challenging for the for the maritime industry. When the, the vessel left Honolulu, it, uh, the crew had decided to do maintenance in the tanks, tank wash and enter, mainly to check A, condition of the tank and B, repair some leaks on the valve hydraulics. Tank cleaning and gas freeing are both critical tasks and definitely not routine work. Such operations involve enclosed space entry, risk of explosion, and are deeply influenced by the ship manager's instructions on how they should be prioritized and performed. A management decision starts the process, fuels the process, uh, gives the process direction and energy. So without the management decision, nothing will happen. Safety is a part of our uh, business model. We have a very successful uh, commercial strategy and to maintain uh, this strategy and success we have to integrate uh, the safety aspect into our operation. So we are trying now to uh, focus uh, on safety all the way from board level down to uh, everybody in the organization. To be a successful ship owning company we, we need to focus on quality and safety. It is impossible to just only have a commercial success without a very good reputation as a safe and high quality manager. So the challenge is to align the messages. Yes, safety is important. We will support your decisions if you choose safety, even if it uh, hurts our commercial interests. And in the long term, commercial interests and safety performance will be part of the same picture. Front Sunda was managed by ITM Dubai. They had the responsibility for all operations on board. After the Front Sunda accident, the management had to look closely at its operations and strengthen the focus on safety. Lars Modin, was appointed CEO of the company after the tragic accident. We cannot afford an incident, safety related incidents as a company. It's as part as much part of our success, financial success as anything else. All frontline crews have taken part in Frontline's quality safety project over the last few years and are trained to follow these principles. Well being a part of a safety campaign alone is no guarantee for safety. And it is perhaps a danger that, okay, we had the safety meeting yesterday, today we will do our business. Safety has to be an integrated part of everything you do, every day, every minute, every second. So, with an owner who focuses on safety, a management who knows Frontline's ambitions, and a crew who knows the principles, how could this accident happen? Why didn't anyone see the dangers and interfere before the accident occurred? Is safety important or is it not? What do we choose when we have a dilemma between safety and uh, operate, operational issues? Do we choose safety or do we choose on-time performance, for instance? In the communication, in communicating about issues like that, the management companies have a, a key role. In the accident report, the master was characterized as being silent 
and not a natural leader. He was experienced, but his knowledge was not used in the critical operations on board. This was by no means a problem for the front sunder alone. The captain's administrative burden increases every year, and this may take their focus away from critical operations. They are judged actually by the quality of their paperwork. Oil majors come on and do the vetting, they want to see documentation. Internal auditors, they want to see documentation. So he will tend to focus on that. And in doing that, it allows less time for his traditional role as master, looking after everything on board the ship. There were two chief officers on board. Neither were experienced. Come on, Brit, please. So ideally, the, the captain should have been the, the mentor to the two chief officers. In this case, it was more a case he, he left them to, to do their own thing um, and was not as involved as he, he should have been. The more junior of the two has, is actually in command. He's the one that uh, has been sailing on the ship for the past four months. The other guy has a little bit more experience. As far as tank washing and gas freeing a crude tanker, neither of them were experienced in the process, so there was no clear leadership uh, between the two. One had only recently signed on, and it was his first trip on board a frontline vessel. He was overloaded with paperwork and failed to focus on the operations on deck. This is Lunetta Park in Manila, the seaman's job market. A huge growth in the maritime industry has created a great demand for skilled personnel, especially masters and officers. Because of this, skilled seamen are hard to find, and officers are promoted through the ranks very quickly. This results in less competent officers in critical positions and poses a major safety threat. The majority of junior officers and ratings working on frontline ships are from the Philippines. The competence of Filipino seamen has increased radically in recent years. Focus on training and education has been great, and the nation has a long and proud tradition in commercial sailing. And we'll be approaching the Sydney Harbour Bridge in about 20 minutes. But there are some challenges that are very easy to forget. In some cultures, it is very difficult to correct or question a superior's actions. And here, we are at the heart of one of the most important issues. How to make a crew member speak up when he sees something that alarms him. If we want to address the problem, we need to understand the situation of the majority of the crews. Their jobs are of vital importance, not only to themselves, but also their whole family. Each worker often supports a large number of people at home, and his relatives are totally dependent on his income. This makes it difficult to speak up. In addition, crew members are often on short-term contracts and are dependent on good appraisal reports. So the attitude sometimes of a Filipino, they rather keep their mouth closed to protect their profession rather than oppose or challenge senior officers on board. Because of this, seamen will sometimes close their eyes when safety is being jeopardized. The possible consequences of opposing a senior officer stops them from speaking up. Sometimes uh, some uh, minor uh, safety was uh, uh, bypassed, especially when we're doing, uh, when we have a uh, uh, small, uh, small time to do this job or uh, we are in a hurry to, to finish this job. Some officer, it's okay, but some officer is not. He tell, okay, do it, do it. Especially me, I complain to the to my superiors that this is not uh, the way to do this. Uh, they told me, oh no no no, never mind, man. we are in a hurry, finish finish this finish work. We tell already for our safety, but sometimes. And they will tell you, you complain too much, and then uh, your, uh, your uh, appraisal report will be bad. Yeah, yes, yes. How about my family? My family will suffer. That's why, even though it's not right, we do it, we follow their orders.
When the tank cleaning was completed on board Front Sunder, crew members entered the tank to do the planned maintenance work. During this time, the crew noticed a fair amount of sludge in the bottom of the tank, and also the smell of gas. After repairing the leaks and doing the inspection, the ship kept the tanks open and uh, in a gas-free condition. And it was two days later they decided they were going to box up the tanks and then they discovered the need to do some hot work to repair one of the hinges on the, the tank wash hatches. The ship was due for vetting in a few months and the broken hinges could definitely create a problem with the vetting. In a worst case scenario, the ship could be refused cargo. Well, I think any crew feels a pressure on doing the job efficiently, cheaply, and uh, as good as possible. And even though there was no commercial pressure on that day on board the Sunda, it was an old ship, a lot of management duties to be carried out, and I would think that the crew felt the pressure of doing those duties within, after all, a restrained time frame. The decision was taken to make permanent weld repairs and go ahead with the work immediately. The master left the recently signed on chief officer in charge of the operation. In this case, they saw some uh, corroded steelwork on deck. They said, we've washed the tank, it's gas-free, let's fix it now. Uh, we have an opportunity. And I think that's certainly part of the process. And then the stepping back and saying, well, what can go wrong if, if we do this work? What risks do we face? Um, that was cut short. Hot work is a very risky operation when executed on board a tanker deck. Everybody should therefore act very carefully and follow the procedures to the letter. I think the, the permit wasn't done properly. It wasn't, this is a hazardous operation. Let's look at each of the steps and verify it's safe. It was assumed it was safe. It was pre-printed as a safe to work permit. If this happened on board the front Sunder because of the chief officer's lack of experience or because he was cutting corners, we will never know. The fact is that he did not use procedures and checklists as safety tools. In this way, he bypassed another barrier that could have prevented the fatal accident from happening. I, I think what I see is that there is so many checklists today. If you consider it, this is a life and death uh, operation and it, it blends in with all the other checklists. And there's a requirement to get the paperwork done. And I think that actually has downgraded the important uh, checklists. There's been a just another checklist, rather than, wait a minute, this is an absolutely critical checklist. If we get this wrong, um, it will result in a catastrophe. They started what is classified as a critical operation. The crew that was to perform the job should have been familiar with the content of the permit. But as far as we know, they were not involved. And there is no evidence that they spoke up on the matter. You do what you think you will be rewarded for doing. And if the crew on board the Sunda felt the strong pressure to do the, man, the um, maintenance duties on time, that's what they would do in order to be perceived as best in class, a good ship, a good captain. When hot work is done on deck, it is of vital importance that there is no remaining gas in the tanks. The crew started measuring for gas content. But in this operation, they made some major mistakes. They used some faulty couplings and a hose that only reached halfway down. They should have foreseen that these factors would give them an incorrect reading, and the breaches of procedure must have been evident for quite a few of the crew members. The ventilation had been shut off for two days. We know the tank hadn't been desludged. Uh, any crude oil sludge in the tropics uh, without ventilation will be giving off gas. Or I think it's inevitable that there must have been doubts in some people's minds that this was not going as it should. 
So, with their lives at stake, what prevented them from reacting and speaking up? If a culture on board a vessel is influenced by uh, informal rewarding systems, saying that you're a good boy if you do this uh, cheaply, quickly, and perhaps even by cutting some corners, if that is rewarding system, that is what you will do. The crew begins the work on the hinges, and three of the four sets that needed welding are fixed without incident. But before they have a chance to finish, they have to break for tea. 